Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Intel Extreme Masters Taipei 2015. Our final stop on the Season 9 Tour before we head to the World Championship in Katowice, which is around six weeks away. Tickets are still available, so make sure you check out on our website, eslgaming.com. Our uh, three uh, good friends are back on the desk with us, uh, Todd, Kolaris and Susie. Um, bit of an abrupt end to that last game, or rather a 10-minute wait to have an abrupt end at the end of that game. Um, Disappointing, I guess, way for San, particularly for you. I know you're a bit of a San fan, um, to crash out, but almost predictable. Yeah, I think so. Uh, the way Soki was playing out, um, uh, and unfortunately for San, just didn't look in form at all compared yeah. to how he would normally be looking in the matchup in 2014. So, yeah, yeah bit of a tough one. Uh, same for 4GG, unfortunately, as well. Uh, if we check in with the bracket and uh, show you the results from Group C, just to confirm that Soul Key and Life do advance from Group C as the top two players. Unfortunately, 4GG coming out of that group without a single map win, uh, beaten as well in the bottom bracket by San, who would then eventually go out to Soul Key. Uh, we also now move on to Group D, so let's show you that. There are four new players in there, of course, one of which is a first-timer here at the Intel Extreme Masters, a man who has meant, well, he's won plenty already and he's made a name for himself over the last three years in StarCraft 2, and yet somehow is still not even 18. Smaru, of course, a fantastic Terran player, very prodigious like uh, in terms of the way that he's played in Korea, and great to see him finally at the Intel Extreme Masters. He goes up against True, that's our first game. And then the other match, which is already underway on our B stream with Nathanius and Rotterdam, is Hydra versus Parting. Winners will play each other in dual tournament format as ever. So Maru versus True then. Great to have Maru here. What are your personal thoughts on it collectively? What do you think, Todd? I think both players are pretty good uh, in this matchup. Uh, I've been following True a lot more closely than I've been following Maru. And uh, he's just like this super fast player who's definitely on par with some of the best Zerks out there. So uh, it's going to be cool. I'm hoping yeah. to see, you know, long games, a lot of, lot of multitask attacks here and there, you know, Muta's defending and... Uh, just some good games overall. Okay, uh, James, it seems like we've been talking about Maru forever, a bit like life, really, and yet he's still so young. But actually, 2014 wasn't the kindest of years to Maru, was it? Not so much. I mean, the problem is, is that uh, over in Korea, everyone's really, really good. Uh, and <laughs> of course, just live it. Really? Just live it. Yeah, kinda. It's yeah. all right. It's all okay. Over there. <laughs> it's all right. Yeah. Um, and Maru, obviously, you know, he can hang with the best of them time yeah. and time again. I mean, he's one of the youngest champions in the entirety of StarCraft II. Uh, so I don't know. I think uh, 2015 for him is really going to be good. I think still, just uh, with the um, with the age that he is, I still think he has even more room to evolve uh, and change his gameplay up in time and I think he's going to be hit 2015 really hard. Yeah, it's incredible to think that uh, it was almost like life was 17 for about three years and it feels like Maru's been 17 for about three years as well. How do they, where do they find these kids? Why are they so young when they come out I, of Korea? I feel the exact same because I remember a few <laughs> years back at IPL in Las Vegas yeah. there was the GSTL finals and he was playing there yep. and he was looking the exact same as now like physically yep. and even in game he was still already very strong. Maybe he's stronger now but yeah. Yeah, not, not, he was in, I remember, I remember not even IPL. 18, not even 18 no, until he, July. In IPL, I believe he was like 14. He was, yeah. 15. Oh, yeah. he was just. He, even his voice sounded like a, a child, you know, when you would talk to him, and he was very meek. So come on, he's come out of his shell a bit more. Maru, um, well, Maru has predicted that he and Parting will come out of groups, wherefore okay. True has told me that it will be him and Maru. Okay. Parting actually thinks True is going to, like, it's kind of funny, Group D, everyone wants everyone else to make okay. it out with them. Uh, everyone has placed themselves coming out of groups though, obviously. Um, True did tell me though, he does have incredible stage fright when he comes to these foreign tournaments. Yes. He's like, I don't understand, I've been on stage, I've been on in, in the booth in Korea many, many times, but as soon as I come to a foreign tournament and I sit there, he just freaks out and he goes, if I can get over that, I think I'd be able to do really well. It, it's a great point as well you raised, because Apollo was talking about this yesterday, we were talking about, uh, you know, how does he get over that kind of... Because he, he is a tremendous player, mm. and he has... We've seen him at Intel Extreme Masters before, and you just go, oh, he's got to make the round of eight, and he never has. <laughs> Why? I guess, I guess if Apollo keeps predicting that True's going to do something, <laughs> eventually it'll come true. Eventually. That's, why, that's how he didn't do it very explicitly yeah. here, maybe. 
I just guess want so. a lady a polo curse upon through. Yeah. No, well, no, no, he no, did no, it two no, times in a row, so I, have, so, I, I mean, have to protect my bro here because he was 100% yesterday. You he can't, you well. can't was, call it. You can't call it a curse if he's 100%. That that's very, not how it works. True. Those were his words, not mine. You want to talk <laughs> about San Jose? Oh, oh now we're going to bat for anyway, old times. Oh, anyway, okay. so I think one notable thing about True right now is that uh, San Jose, Shenzhen, and now he's made it through open bracket yes. each time. Yeah. And the fact, you know, I, I really feel like this is his time to finally make it to the round of eight. So, yeah, but picking versus Maru, that's yeah. kind of hard, isn't it? Tough, isn't it? Um, I'll go with True because I'm a softy and I want him to do well. <laughs> okay. Uh, they don't have a huge amount of history. They've only met once in official matches, so uh, difficult to, you know, kind of find any form between the two of them. But uh, uh, Maru won that one 2-1. Does that sway you at all? Not really. Um, I mean, I was going to go with Maru anyway okay. going into this game. Right. I, I think Maru, whenever he's on, he doesn't seem to care. He just he just does what he needs to do. Every time I see he's the guy, he just, he has no care about he's him the whatsoever. Life. He just gets on with it. Yeah, he's the Terran life. Yeah. So the idea of True having some kind of stage fright issues or whatever, like, <laughs> Maru's not going to have to deal with those. Uh, and he's going to, I think he's going to power on through. Okay, Todd. Uh, I, I have to agree with James, which always... Uh, it's a pain. Oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> it's very difficult. Worrying. But, very uh, worrying. You'll yeah. start busting out some great French on you if you carry on. Oh, please, never again. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty rough. Uh, all right, thank you very much. Let's head into our first match of Group D. Luckily, neither of these men know any French, and if they do, they're keeping it to themselves and certainly not upsetting Todd. It's time for Game 1 of Group D with Maynard and Apollo. G'day guys, welcome back. Maynard and Apollo here. I'm not going to try any French at all, wouldn't embarrass myself. I'm just going to talk about StarCraft right now. We've got Maru versus True coming up. Apollo, your favorite player against the very last Terran left. I, get, the uh, I, I suppose I would say against my favorite Terran too. Um, yeah, it's a tough one. Uh, uh, maybe that's going a little bit too far, but I've got a very soft swap for innovation. Um, but Maru for me is so very good at playing StarCraft and his style is lovable. I've got a soft spot for people like MMA who play a very dynamic, very aggressive game. And that's what we're going to see today, too. That is how Mora likes to play Terran. He yeah. isn't the traditional sit back three command center, build up, and then have an army in the late game. He is the type of player who will want to be aggressive from the get go. And to be honest, it's also one of his weaknesses, if not his biggest weakness, that kind of style, but it's very fun to watch. We've brought it up many, many times over the cast this weekend, especially with Zerg games, because there have been quite a few on the new maps tougher for the Zerg to get to that to that third base, but the meta is shifting where Zerg is starting to realize that if they go for Mutas consistently on two yeah. bases, they can shut down things like Banshee play, Hellbat pushes, stuff like that. So it's starting to sort of, you know, the Hellbat push was helping Terran very, very well against in TVZ, and to be different, Frank, it still is. But uh, we saw Kian knock it back yep. yesterday, and... Um, Zergs are definitely starting to deal with these type of plays. There's yes. been a couple of difficult things that Zergs have had to go through the last couple of months. Uh, the number one was the push as soon as 2-2 was done. That was, for a lot of Zergs, almost unstoppable until recent where they've been able to deal with it with the high Baneling count. And then more recent is the Hellbat type of pushes, the Hellion Banshee Hellbat types of play. And mm. like you said, it's been slowed down. They've started to stop it. And things have started to swing in favor of Zerg again. Yep. But in this matchup between these two players, they haven't swung far enough for me to believe that True can beat Mara. I think True is going to advance from this group. I think he's going to get to the top eight for the first time. I believe in him, but uh, he's not going to win this series. I'm feeling a Maru parting group. I actually agree with the uh, the prediction of Maru himself. I think Maru parting is probably going to, probably yeah. going to see out of here. But I mean, True is very, very impressive. He made a couple micro controls, a couple, you know, a couple missed clicks here and there uh, yesterday. Yep. Or not yesterday, the day before, sorry. Um, so, I mean, there's some signs of cracks in the pavement there, but mm. True is incredible. True he, is a... He's consistently made it into the group stages. Can't quite yeah. get into that round of eight, but he's obviously looking to change history today. Todd said it good and said it well up there that he's a very fast type player. So he's very good with his mechanics and he's just overall capable of doing a lot of things all at once. And when I've seen him play the best uh, to, he, uh, to the best that he can do, he looks amazing, and he's got so much potential to be one of the best Zerg players out there. He just hasn't really hit that yet. But I think that this year could be his year to do so. 
That's right. Uh, I, f I fully believe it. If it doesn't happen here later in the year, perhaps as well, because it is showing that now that he's on uh, uh, on dead pixels. He's not on a Kesper team anymore. He's on an individual foreign team, I guess you would call it, which means that he's going to go to a lot of individual tournaments, yeah. get himself lots of WCS points, which means we'll be seeing him at more Intel Extreme Masters. And he needs to perform at these as well he because does. he's not in. Well, right now he hasn't qualified for GSL. He hasn't qualified for Star League, right. and he doesn't play in Pro League. He needs to travel to these events, and he also needs to do well if he wants to stand out above the rest. And there was a lot of good Zerg players. There's a lot of good Korean players in Korea wanting to break out. He is one of them. He needs to do well at this event. He does. And let's switch over to Game number one, without further ado. Maru is so small. I never met him in person until today. He is even smaller than I thought he would be. He is a tiny, tiny guy, but a huge Terran player in the top right here from Jin Air. This is Maru. First place from the Korea and Asian qualifiers. Yes. The most difficult qualifier there is out there. No small feat. And in the bottom left here from Dead Pixels, we're talking about a little bit before the game started. This is true who um, very sadly failed to qualify for the event. Yep. But upon failing to qualify, traveled over here anyway. It's a very short flight from Korea to Taiwan. It is, yeah. It's just about, I think, about two-hour flight yep. from Korea. So the Koreans very, very alert and sharp today. Yep. And yeah, I mean, true, once again, not get, managing to get through the qualifiers and roughing it through probably the most horrifying open bracket that Intel Extreme Masters has had for a while. Sulky just advanced to the round of eight. True has already beaten Sulky two games to one in the open bracket. He then went on to beat Liquid Hero and a favorite of ours, Lee Nock. He's shown that he can tangle with the best. Yes. Let's hopefully he can do it in Group D today. Absolutely. And the best is definitely what he's up against here. Maru going gasless for now. We'll be dropping it pretty shortly if he's going to drop it at all, but uh, no. So it looks like he's going to be just getting those minerals for a little bit. Yeah, he hasn't decided to take a gas on 12. And this is something I've started to notice a lot in the Korean metagame, and especially from this youngster right now, is they're no longer going for Reaper first, but they're also not going for Command Center first. They're going in the middle, which means a gas is usually taken around 14 or 15 supply. And then what he wants to do here is build a couple of Marines when the barracks is done to be safe, but then go straight for the reactor and then the factory on top. Yeah, first gas only halfway getting done now, so that is a little bit later than we used to be seeing. But yeah, we mentioned it when um, when 4GG was playing life. Terrans like to go for the, the Marine first, deny Overlord scouts, try mm. and keep them in the dark a little bit, which is very difficult when um, you yeah. know, there's two or three Overlords on that side of the map suiciding into your main or trying to get into the natural and have a look at what's going on. You got it. If you can bat those away, you can pull yeah. a fast one. And when you're such an unpredictable Terran like Mara is, that is a very good thing for you to do because yeah. you don't know what he's going to be doing. And if you're hiding what you're doing with a Marine or two, you can play the three command center and make the Zerg player worried that he could be attacked, yet you're pushing your economy further. And of course, Flitway as well. If he's expecting three CC, you can go over towards an aggressive push. And mm. Mara, I think that's definitely one of his biggest strengths, along with his aggression, is that he is very unpredictable. He is. Has to, I mean, you're forced to SEV scout, obviously you're not going to burn a scan or anything silly like that in the early game. So without the Reaper, sending that SCV down there and the second SCV to expand, with two Marines kind of just holding to deny yeah. any Lynx scouts, they're not hunting for Overlords or anything like that. He's not going deep out there. Mm. Um, so nice large map. It's actually very good spawn positions for Maru, I feel, yes. having close air yeah. here. Considering his multitask and his drop play and the aggression, which I'm sure we're going to yeah. see in this game because what another added benefit of getting the reactor pretty pretty much straight away here is you're able to squeeze out quite a few Marines before you need to switch up the factory with the barracks here. So I wouldn't be surprised to see Mora try to get a starport, build six to eight Marines, and do this type of drop that we've seen from players such as Flash, where they drop the Marines and run in with the Hellions. It yep. can really punish a greedy Zerg. Oh, and there he goes. He's found himself an Overlord, a big juicy fat one. Two Marines may be able to burn it down. It's going to be close. True tries to mark it away, but oh, it's all for naught. Nice supply block there, and that's actually a really nice pick off for Maru. Yeah, and conversely, devastating for True. Yeah, not a good start here for the Dead Pixels player. Working on those back rocks there, looking to get himself another channel to uh, to the back area here, which is not generally done on Dead Wing, so this is an interesting decision from True. He's going to catch another Overlord. Oh my god, Maru. He can't be stopped, man. He's heading towards that third. These are, the Marines just don't see the Overlord to the right of them. Oh. Otherwise, it's a free Overlord. Indeed. And that, God. Poor True if that happened. But lucky for him, Maru wasn't completely mm. searching for that one last Overlord. But he is getting the Starport, and you're absolutely right. I feel like maybe Marine and Mind Drop with Hellions. 
That's what it's going to be yeah. here. And True has spread himself very thin across three bases, uh, and he's droning up quite a lot. There's no Roach Warren down yet. There's not a lot of gas in the bank. There's no Bailing S. There's nothing really to deal with this type he's of play. He's droning yet. very heavily. He's just made a round of six drones. This third hatchery is already in a lot of trouble. This Overlord, actually, is going to supply block True in a second. Oh boy, he's just had to start another one because he knows he's not going to be able to make any units for a little bit once that one goes down. The Queen's doing good damage here, but there is so much Terran. He's just going to have to... It looks like he has to sacrifice the third hatchery. Oh man, his entire game plan revolves around that. His entire build. Mm. Maru not uh, getting super greedy with his attack here. He's actually pulling back and waiting for that drop, I yeah. guess. He, he doesn't understand that his opponent's heavily supply blocked, so there could have been yeah. a rush of Zerklings out and he would have lost everything, so he's going to pull back safe, even though he could have stayed there. So True switching things up, dropping the Roach Warren. Mm. Dill's forced to have to make Roaches at this point, so he's not going to defend with Banelings. Like you mentioned, there is no Nest. And Maru following this up, as Terrans like to do, getting that one Viking to kill more Overlords and deny more scouting. Oh. This Overlord nicely placed from True will scout this drop. Can he stop it? Though? Can he react? He doesn't there's have much no of units. Detection for the Widowmine that's in there. You're absolutely right. There is no lair. There is no spore crawler. Widowmine gets dropped at the top of the extractor there, and these drones just have to leave. Nothing that True can do about it. No, he's about to have Roaches pop there. So if he joins his all army together, he will be able to push this back eventually. But that Widowmine's going to be a nuisance. Oh no, he oh, actually got to pick okay. it up. Interesting. I'm surprised he didn't just leave it there to, mm. to deny more uh, further oh, mining time. 20 lings, a uh -oh. great scan here, by the way. A scan reveals on the natural the bailing nest and a bunch of zerglings. Wow, beautiful star sense from Hamaru. He's going to be, well, I mean, he has all the information, but oh, will he man. still hold? It looks really good. So far, he's done everything. He hasn't lost his Hellions. He hasn't really lost any units at all. And he's dropping the static defense. The bunkers are coming down already here. The roaches and the lings taking the middle of the map away. Oh, and my. this one Widow Mine will actually kill a couple lings, but not too much. This guy is unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable play so far from Mario. He's set up defensively back at home, and if he nails this defense, I would say that was there's a perfect game from him. It's borderline perfect right now. It's not far off, that's for damn sure. Marines have filled up that bunker, and they'll continue to as there's three bunkers down for Maru here. The Banelings are being morphed. The Viking completely aware of the Baneling count. He's, he's just hovering above the Zerg army yeah. here. He knows exactly what's going on going to start to wall that bunker in. He's probably going to have to evacuate the bunkers as the bailings roll in to make sure the units survive and not just die instantly. And he's following this up with the Banshee as well. And the Banshee's going to help a lot against the Roaches. I don't think it'll be in this first attack, though. Nice supply block wall. The first bunker does go down. The second one, not down just yet, but will shortly follow the two bailings heading into the middle. Actually, they all got sacrificed on that bunker there. Oh, man. This isn't working. No, not at all. True has got a lot of Roaches left, but they're getting very low. And there's only three bailings here slow. I mean, they're away from the bunker, but it just takes a little bit of Hellion Micro. And these Banelings can be sniped here. He's just concentrating on the Roaches for now. The, the Banelings got a detonation there, but there wasn't that many SCVs at all. Only eight. And he lost so many resources here. Yeah, he's down in supply, but he's ahead in the game. 1-1 one, one upgrades on the way. Stim about to finish. The Banshees are out. Or at least that one Banshee. Very good defense there. Very nicely done. So he's dropping Spore Crawlers. He did see that Banshee. So uh, True trying to deal with the counterattack, which Maru could possibly do here. He's definitely going to try and send the Banshee across the map and get some economic damage done because he is already in such a good spot economically. Why not get further ahead? 1-1 one, one on the way. Third CC floating over to take it as well. Yeah, nice uh, catch up with drones, though, by True working off these three hatcheries very well. He's able to catch up in drones. And now starting his last, starting his evolution chain is a little bit behind, though. Widowmine coming back, there is a Spore Crawler, so he does have the detection. The Queen can deal with that, but the Widowmine will get a shot off. If he targets the drones, he's going to get a cluster here. Ooh, five drones to the Widowmine, he picks it up. That's a, just a, another big blow to True there. Uh, unfortunately, hit. No, I was going to say the Combat Shields is missing, but it's just started, so okay. I'll mind on that. That's right. Nearly pulled a Maynard there for getting Combat Shields. Glad to see that he's consistently yeah. better than I am. <laughs> When this 1-1 uh, one, one completes, we're going to have a very, very powerful attack. Yeah. There's going to be 1-1 one, one versus 0-0 zero, zero Zerklings. There'll also be combat shields in this. There's going to be medivacs. There'll be no bailing speed. If the attack starts to move out very shortly, there should be no bailing speed. Mm. It's going to be kind of difficult for True to defend it. Decent preparation in the main from True, at least. This drop should be shut down pretty hard here. He's got three banelings and a lot of lings. Mar yeah, Murray just needs to leave. Oh, might get another Overlord, though. True. Ah! He needs to start bailing speed. That's another supply block. I Big one stress too. how important bailing speed is. Yeah, because he doesn't have... I mean, his creep spread's okay, but it's not as far as, as say, life versus 4GG, where he already had creep at the tower at this point. True needs to engage a little bit off creep and also on creep when, when with a player like Maru splitting his units 
Bailing speed is a must get. Well, these units can just do unlimited amounts of damage. Great micro by oh. Mora, targeting down the Bailings, and then just sitting there doing maximum amounts of damage before the Marines started to die off and then picks them up, gets out of there. The 1-1 one, one upgrades are complete. And this would be a perfect, perfect time to fight. Absolutely. 1-1 one, one is done. Stim is done. Combat shield also done. These Marines could almost engage that ball of Zerglings. It's actually a very close fight there. 1-1 one, one not quite done for True, so it's a two-upgrade lead for Mari for the next few seconds at least. 30 Still links. No baneling speed. No baneling speed is mm. so bad. True just... Struggling to find herself a foothold here against Maru. Such a scary player. He picks up getting more Banelings. So efficient here is Maru. He's just not hes not making any mistakes. He's just tearing True apart. Absolutely wonderful play. And this is the style, as I mentioned before. It's fun, it's aggressive, it's entertaining, and it's brilliant. And the Widowmine. Oh my god, that Widowmine killed so many Zerglings. Oh boy. Bad goes to worse for our poor friend True here as Maru continues to tear him apart, death yeah. by a thousand punches. And it's not even all the, you know, cool maneuvers he's doing with his units. It's that he's nailing everything back at home as well. His extra production, his unit production. Yeah. Um, his macro is flawless. It's, it's brilliant and he's climbing further and further ahead in supply. He is indeed. Continuing to pick up and not even really losing any units at all while doing this. Losing a Marine here and there, no big deal. He always has the hot pickup and does maximum damage to those Zerglings on the ground. And True just keeps needs, needs to worry about this constant, constant harassment from, yeah. Mar Mar from Mari. He just finally got a meta back there. Yeah, it's because but he's been so stressed and so under pressure that he has to build Bailings not to die, that he hasn't been able to build Mutilis, which are the counter to Medivacs. And because the counter is not there, Mora persistently keeps on hammering no. that one home. Finally, Bailing speed starts, but it's a little bit too late. And just one Mutilis coming up for poor True here. He's making them yeah. one at a time. But look at his gas bank. Yeah, exactly. It's that they all should be Mutilis at this point in the game, but he just, he's got no womb to breathe. He's had to make Lings, he's had to remake drones. He's losing both of them consistently as this game goes along. He's going for a counter-attack here. There is an opening. The mines aren't dropped, but Drilling oh. Claws is on the way. Drops and in three places with a Banshee doing harassment inside the main base while defending at home. Oh my god, this kid. He's looking, unbelievable. He's looking as strong against against this player as life looked against 4GG. Both these players just look like they're a level or two above their opponent. There was three players that we all mentioned that would stand out in this tournament. It was always going to be Hero, it was always going to be Life, and it was always going to be this turn play right here, and he's living up to the hype. Oh my god. And he's just absolutely demolishing True. It's not even close, this game. Not even close. Not even once, man. And what a debut for this guy yeah. in Intel Extreme Masters. And Could you comes... ask for a better game? No, you couldn't have. Oh absolutely my god. Absolutely perfect from the get-go, and now he's coming in for the finishing blow. He's, he's done with the harassment. He's here with his army, and he's worn True down to 80 supply through many vac drops over and over over here oh. comes the finishing blow and see your banelings the widow mines deal with all of that and that was true's last line of defense if there isn't if, if there even is one left and this should be the gg push here from maru he's on top of the spire and takes himself game number one very very convincingly annihilation absolute annihilation damn man looking good for that maru life finals that we were talking about we were hoping was happening there's there's nothing you can fault there. No. You can look at small things like, oh, he didn't start his 2-2 upgrades on time. Well, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. No. He's controlling three different drops at the same time. It, if he never had 2-2 in that game, it wouldn't have mattered. He was fine with the upgrades he had. Yeah. Wonderful performance here for the 18-year-old. Beautiful year stuff, yeah. His Widow Mines just connected as well as they could. The drops were non-stop. He, yep. never, he never yep. stopped. The units, the units that he had were almost never passive in that yep. game. He was always using them. So, I mean, we could, we could gush about Maru all day, but we still need to see if True can tie the series. He does have the skills to pay the bills, Apollo. So we'll find out shortly. We're going to take a break before we get into game number two. Please don't go away.
Welcome back, StarCraft fans. This is game number two about to start between Maru and True. And True is going to need to play the series of his life to stand a chance here against this incredible Terran. I know and I've spoken to a lot of casual StarCraft players and viewers in the past. And at the highest level, sometimes it's very difficult to tell the difference between who's winning and who's losing. And sometimes you ask, or, you know, sometimes you tell people, well, look, the easiest way is to look at the supply, and that's who's winning and losing. But I think anybody not knowing StarCraft at all could easily tell the difference between these two players. It was a world of difference between the two. Absolutely fantastic start here of the tournament. Well, there was a bunch of red units and blue, blue units, and the red units were dying and the blue units were living the whole time, so... It's a pretty easy way to... It's a present. very easy yeah. uh, very easy one to look at there to see who is winning. <laughs> and, I, and I have a feeling something very similar is going to happen as we load into game number two here. It's True, you know, Susie talks a little bit about his nerves and that he's nervous when he gets onto stage. And it's his third time at this level in the tournament at the round of 16. And it's like, oh, no, it's happening again. But he's just faced one of the best players in the world, if not the best Terran. Like, it's mm. so very difficult up there on stage. I'm sure it is for him. Yeah, he does have a bit of stage fright. Maru, however, plays on stage pretty much every day, yeah. <laughs> like during Pro League, SSL, yeah. doesn't matter. You call, you name it, he plays consistently on stage, yeah. never phased. He is a rock solid, emotionless, yeah. killing machine. And he has not been eliminated from any tournament he's played in so far this year. He's trading no. wins in Pro League, but that's a little bit different. But in GSL and in the Star League, he's in the round of 16 for both. He's looking to try and grab the double in those two tournaments, and what a feat that would be. But he's here in Taiwan to try and grab his first international trophy. And remember, this is also his first international tournament in the Intel Stream Masters. That's right. We're going to switch over into game two right now. See how this guy goes along. True just needs to pull a rabbit out of the hat, man. He's, he's got to play incredibly good. He needs to level himself up. He needs to be like Goku in the fight against Freezer, <laughs> changing into a Super Saiyan mid-fight. He needs to do this mid-series against Maru. <sighs> He does. He does. Yeah, and this is the player in question. True from Digital, from Dead Pixel, sorry. I keep saying that. Jeez. And then the top here from Jinan Green Wings. Who can mistake this guy? This is Maru. And he's, he's, probably, he's, he's probably on the inside as happy and bright as that star on his CC, but he's not showing it on his face. The choice of strategy explains and describes everything for me yeah. and what he's thinking. He's here. This is a waste of my time against you. You're not even putting up a fight. Oh. I might as well just two racks you and end it like this. You know, True actually corrected his uh, Overlord, just realizing that he should probably look for proxies here, and he's uh, sending it kind of towards where the proxy is, but... Mm, it's going to be Proxy Reaper too, by the looks of things. Yeah, it's going to be proxy, uh, proxy Reaper. There is going to be a second barracks here, or at least a regular scout. I'm not too sure what this second he's SCV see the is. Here. Yeah, he is, if he keeps going here. And this is going to be good for True. Scouting it at this time, the barracks about uh, you know halfway done. If you yep. see that, if you see the second barracks go down as well, well, I mean he is getting a pull, uh, hatch first, which yeah, is a this shame. Is, but this uh, is good for True though. This is good that he's able to spot this so early on. Yeah, definitely. So good star sense from him. Sending the Overlord off does see it. But it doesn't tip off to Mario that he's seen it either. The problem is he doesn't know exactly what this is no. because he scouted it. He scouted the tip of the barracks. Just the tip. He didn't know if there was a. Another barracks behind it or not. He doesn't know if this is Reaper or Marines. Yeah, he hasn't seen any gas. Obviously, the Overlords are only on his half of the map. He's chosen to try and get a gas here, so... Mm. That will work out well for him eventually, but he's going to take a lot of damage in the meantime. This is He's going to have to control very well. His Queen is going to be super Two. important to get out. Maru probably going to drop a bunker at some point towards the main or in between the main and the natural here. Make things a little bit easier for his Reapers to stay alive. And aggression is incoming. Reaper number one about to pop. And there's that bunker. Just out the front of the main on the ramp there. All right. Both sides of this need to micro the best they can do. Mm, SCV still alive. This Reaper going to town here. And we got some leagues on the way. Mario, I mean, True obviously getting that spawning pool because he's not silly. He doesn't want to die to this. Yeah. One queen, six leagues on the way. Saving drones by turning them into extractors. Nice little trick you can do. And six links are out, so this bunker's in a lot of trouble, this Reaper as well. He's making a spine crawler as well, uh, sorry, a spore crawler. Yeah, that's just to save the drone, it's but he should run. make a spine crawl against yeah. this type of pressure. Um, he should stop mining gas now, I think that you should just get Zerkling speed. You could try to build a Roach Warren, but that is a long time to get the Roach Warren out here. 
And second Reaper's joined the fray. Looks like Maru is yeah, he's mining done with this now. now. He's ready. I mean, look at his mineral income. It's very bad here compared to his gas. Just get out of gas, get speed, stay calm. He's losing a lot. Yeah, he is. Zergling's dying left and right. Drone's going down as well. Oh, this Queen's getting half oh, health. Man. She's getting very, very low. And this is already looking pretty bad for True. I think Maru's control is just going to win this game here, Maynard. Yeah, he's got the spine crawler, which is going to help a lot. He's unrooting it to move it towards the bunker. But Moro but can dance around the spine crawler. He doesn't have yeah, to fight the spine. He, he, he can, can actually, go around the back and exactly. go anywhere he wants. He can circle around behind the minerals. In fact, another drone being saved to the spore crawler, but there might be almost too much DPS that he actually can burn down the spore crawler with Reapers. Not something that I'd normally say in a cast of Starcraft Apollo, but. Oh, True is waiting till he can get Zirkling speed and just kind of get us wrap around, because okay. until then, he's going to be kited all day. He's going to try and get us around here with the drones, oh, but oh my god, covered in butter. Absolutely Slips straight through, beautiful. and True is being embarrassed by Maru right now, just with this Reaper rush on two proxy barracks. You couldn't have said it better. This series is... It will be for True disappointing. Absolutely. He would have loved yeah. to have shown and done better, but he has been outclassed in every department. He got absolutely destroyed in game number one, and he's just been run it's around in game number two. heartbreaking to watch, man. I mean, I'm a Terran player, and I, I love to see Terrans win, but boy, this I really feel for True here. Yeah, this look, is just it's, a, it's, huge, it's, a huge outclassing by uh, by Maro in this series. Yeah, I mean, he's almost got enough Reapers to take on the spine crawler. GG, absolutely flawless 2-0. Flawless victory. Flaw Look, he's bored. He's bored, man. This game is too easy for a game like, like this. He's like, give me a tougher opponent. What is this, Intel Extreme Masters? Where's life? Give him to me. He's got to go through parting first in the winners' match, Maynard. That's right. But I know he wants life. He does. I know he wants hero. He wants anyone else. But true, just got. I mean, there is very few words to describe what just happened to this man. Some of them too extreme for the broadcast. Shrek. Probably one that you could say. You could use that one. You could, and I will. I just did. He got absolutely annihilated. It wasn't wasn't close. That was a very fast series, and True is. Uh, uh, let's just say for True, you want to hope that Moro goes through in first place because if you want to fight for second place, you do not want to play this guy again. You have to be no. able to beat Parting um, or Hydra. You've got no chance here. Yeah. So I mean, he does still have a shot at getting out of the group for True fans. So don't yep. feel too bad about that. Um, so Parting, I mean. Part Parting has actually beaten Maru before, so if uh, if Parting and Maru fight, could possibly go either way. Yeah. But um, geez, he just looks so solid. I mean, this is unbelievable, and I mean, he's traveled to very few tournaments. This is a very easy one for him to travel to. It's a hop over the pond here, just two hours worth of travel. Um, there's no adjustment really to food. I'm sure they brought a lot of their own food over. There's no adjustment to time zones. He's in prime condition, and of course he's in prime condition because he plays. I mean, he's the ace. He is the man at Gen Air, along yeah. with SOS. He is the boy that they always look towards to win their games. He's doing excellently in GSL. He's in top form, and he's just showing it at this tournament. That's right. And we're, gonna, we're just going to cross over and talk to the man in question himself, Mara at the desk with Red Eye. Take it away. Thank you very much, Maynard and Apollo there on the commentary for our first game in Group D. Yes, Maro is with us. Congratulations, Maro. Very nice win indeed. Um, let's talk uh, through the, the two maps uh, themselves. And first of all, let's talk about map two. Um, great Reaper proxy. I mean, was that a plan all along? Were you thinking, having watched what he'd done before, that's how you were going to play it? How did that come about? Oh, uh, 이 경기 때, uh, 그 리퍼 나왔을 때 그렇게 할 거라고 예상을 하고 게임을 시작한 건지. 그러니까 그 게임 플레이, 네가 네가 음, 짜온 게임이 그대로 나 그대로 네, 잘 펼쳐진 그대로. 건지. Oh, could I? Yeah. He feels that uh, whatever he prepared, everything just kind of went exactly the way that he wanted it to go. So it, didn't, it didn't really matter? Well, if you did something different, you just think it would be easier? If it was a pump, it would be hard, but if it was a multi, it would be easier to get it. His build was that he had expanded first, and so he felt like it was just a really easy win for him. Okay. On a scale of 1 to 10, because he looked quite bored in the booth, how easy was the match? Was it 1 being very easy, 10 being hard? Like, when I was looking at the booth, I was very tired and I was like, oh, this game is easy, I was like, oh, this game is easy. So, if it was easy, if it was easy, if it was easy, what was it? 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 He says 5. Oh, okay, so 5. He says 5. All right, okay. Is it really 5 or is it now? <laughs> I said, I asked him, is it really five or did you just say that because you're trying to be nice and respectful? And he went, I don't know. 
Okay, <laughs> we'll take that as him trying to be nice. Um, the, these were two very well conducted games, and obviously he's on the Kespa team, so I'm guessing he practices a lot. Going to these tournaments, uh, does he feel confident compared to as to when he would have to practice for a single league match, like usually he does in, uh, with Pro League? Now he's going to have to basically go along the way, find out who he has to play, mm -hmm. and then come up with a plan and play on the spot. Does that format, does he like it? Does he, does, is he confident in it? In Korea, when Pro League, he knows who his opponent is, he can play the game all prepared, but here, he's going to go and get the opponent, and he's going to get the opponent, and he's going to get the opponent. Do you think of that style, or do you think of that style? I think it's better to do it. Why? 준비할 시간이 많으면 상대방도 이렇게 준비가 많이 되는데 저는 바로 하는 게 좋은 것 같아요. He actually likes the style where he just gets to go because uh, if he has time to prepare for an opponent, then the opponent obviously has time to prepare for him. But he feels that this is uh, better for him that he could just kind of find an opponent and just go for it. So uh, having answered this way, I wonder actually. Where does he rate his chances of simply winning this tournament then? 그러면 그렇게 대답을 한다면 우승할 수 있을 것 같아? 이거 전체적으로 다? 네, 할수 있을 것 같아. Yeah, he said. I, I asked him. So you know, if you're thinking like this, do you think you have chance to win the whole thing? He goes, Yeah, I think I can. <laughs> can we ask? <laughs> can we ask about how he's never phased by anything? Yeah. Is there? <laughs> like I don't I mean, want to offend him. But well, actually, let, let yeah. me let me ask the question directly. What? What worries you, married life? <laughs> what worries That's you? That's a great way to answer. 여기 있는 분들 그렇고 지금 해설자들도 항상 그런 말을 나오는데 얼굴 표정 보면은 걱정이 하나도 없어. 어, 스트레스 안 받는 것 같고 너무 편해 게임할 때. 두려워하는 게 뭐가 있어? 저 되게 걱정 많이 하는데. 무슨 걱정? 지면 어떡하지? He says he actually does have a lot of worries. Okay. Um, and I said, what kind of worries? He goes. What do I do if I lose? <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. Okay, but uh, he's not. Is he afraid of spiders or snakes I mean, or anything? 그냥, anything? 그냥 게임 말고도 무서워하는 거 있어? 뭐 거미 같은 거든지. 다 무서워. 다 무서워. Yeah. He said everything. I was like spiders kind of thing. He's like no everything. He has a great poker face. Scared of everything? Well, 완전 poker face in there. 경기할 때만. Oh, he said only during games. Okay. He's got a poker face, All but right. he's scared oh. of everything. All right, fair enough. Well, he's, he does it very well. I would never know when he's got a pair of aces in his pocket. That's for sure. Um, Mary, what do you what do you think of parting next? 이제 다음 어, 이상희 선수랑 붙을 건데 그 선수는 어떻다고 생각해? 이상한 것만 조심하면 제가 이길 것 같아요. 이상한 것만 조심하면. 네. He said as long as I, he's cautious of uh, maybe strange plays that Parting yeah. might have, he's pretty confident he'll what, win. What, what about uh, what about Parting's mind games? Uh, How does he block them out? 이사기가 좀그 뭐야 멘탈 싸움을 잘하는 것 같은데 심적인 싸움을 많이 잘하는 것 같은데 그거에 대해서 어떻게 생각해? 어, 저랑은 상관없는데 자꾸 저 혼자 말려가지고 지는 경기가 많았어요. 그래서. Okay, he says uh, it doesn't really affect me all that much, but yeah. Parting's been just kind of trying to put him down and say yeah. like, hey, you know, I've played a lot of games, you know, and things like that to him. But he was just like, as long as I don't let that get to me, it should be fine. Okay. Yeah. There, there is a lot of protests actually in the tournament, not yeah. overlooking Parting or anything, but those that worry him going further in the tournament to have to have potentially to face like guys like Hero, Classic, and all these guys. 지금 엄청 많은 프로테스가 팔강으로 올라왔는데 그거에 yeah. 대해서 걱정되는 건 없어? He's not worried. No, he just gave me a straight. Idea. I just said, "Are you worried about?" It? He said, "No." Brilliant. <laughs> I love it. He's very straightforward, guys. Um, I, I want to know. You know, he's the only Terran yeah. now going yeah. into this. Last Terran. Uh, last Terran um, and and we know, like in Tasia, when he comes into these tournaments, he does very well, even though he's a Terran. I'm just going to ask him how he feels about that. 지금 이제 테란으로는 마지막으로 남았는데 테란의 힘으로 끝까지 진짜 갈수 있을 것 같은지. 테란이 뭐 약한 점이 있다고 생각해? 안 좋죠. Hang on, hang on. I think I've got this. He gives the I don't think he cares. I don't think he cares. I don't think he cares. Well, I asked. I was like, is there anything bad about Terran? I mean, and he was like, no, Terran's not very good. But that was his answer. Okay. So life basically thinks Zergs are the least mm -hmm. strong. He thinks Terrans are the least strong. I, brilliant. I think we've got it. I I've, think I've, we got it. What do you think? I think. <laughs> I think. I think using Protoss is underpowered. I think that might be. So I think. 아까 승현이는 저그가 제일 약하다고 그랬고, 너는 테란이 테란이랑 저그랑 어느 게더 약하다고 생각해? 
Terani. <laughs> I, I asked, you know, Life had said that. What do you think? He was like, no, I think Terran's yeah. a little weaker than Zerg. <laughs> oh, dear. These are all mind games. They're all going towards really the end think game. So. Uh, thank you very much, Maro, and well done for winning your opening game. We'll see Maro very shortly because he'll be going through the play parting. The man with all the mind tricks, but they're not getting past our 17-year-old champion, that's for sure. That one's coming up after the break. Don't go too far away.